Well, we're going to finish up our videos with the race horses this week. We have had a great year. We've had a pretty good week. Yesterday kind of bent a little bit. It hurt a little bit. I thought we had, I looked at the line and said, if we have a great day, we'll win seven races. We won one. It wasn't a great day, but it wasn't a horrible day. Uh, a very in, informative day, I believe, when all, all the dust settled. And I think uh, we can do better next week. Brace for Landing played a big role in that. Um, he's going to move from Dayton over to the Meadows, his next start. I just don't think he's over the track well. And I'm not, I said to Jason, I don't think we can commit to changing his shoes. He's been good in those shoes. He, they served him very well in Sayota and Mohawk all winter, all summer long. I don't think we're going to change the shoes. We're going to change the venue. And uh, Brace for Landing is heading to... Yeah. His, his last three starts, he's been poor, and all three of them have been a date. Um, Save America has been just a, a, an absolute pleasant treat. Uh, the horse has been great since day one when we got him. He continues to race great. He'll be heading to Dayton next Thursday. Spitfire overseas. Yes, he wasn't as good. And somebody said, oh, maybe he's not the same old Spitfire. You guys just have to understand. You have to understand. You can't be on the shelf and off the shelf and immediately be the horse you were. That takes a, an extremely special kind of animal and a very rare one. It takes time. Spitfire overseas literally looks like a broodmare right now. Stacy has about 100, if not 120 pounds overweight. He just needs to work back into shape. And as he does, and he hits that top line, and he will get back there. He didn't get put away dull. He didn't get burned up at, at four when we were racing him. He didn't, he wasn't hurt when we put him away. We put him away because it was the right time to put him away. And that horse raced all through his three-year-old season, all the way into his four-year-old season, and then got a break in June. So, and for the people out there, bigger horse is longer. It's a hundred percent longer, and and that's what what I was getting at. Is you guys have to understand, it doesn't work that way. I know you believe it does. It's they they aren't cards. You don't just go in and turn the key and they're ready to go. It takes time. And trust me when I tell you, give Spitfire a sees three or four starts, get some of that flat fat off of him, get him really in good shape and trotting good, and then you're going to see him not only get to but start to do very well in the open as he did his three-year-old into his four-year-old season now as he gets into his five-year-old season. Um, tactical Mounds, again, a very rare break at the start last week, this week. I'm sure she will repeat that next week. Texan Soprano, another horse has to round into shape also. A uh, little flat his first two, but I'm sure he'll come out swinging uh, very soon. All gas, no breaks. It missed a month. It's going on five weeks. And... Um, James did tell me the horse schooled very good yesterday, so I'm interested to see how he's going to race a week from Monday. School her on Friday, come back with another semi-stiff training on Wednesday. I would say if he's in our barn uh, right now, I'd probably go a mile and a half with him. Uh, 15, 10, 5 in the jog cart on Wednesday. Really tighten him up without going too fast. And then uh, he'll be ready to rock on Monday. That's my feeling with gas. The greatest ending, uh, Stacy said, trained well today. He is going to be in to go. Uh, he is going to be Indigo on, uh, I assume Thursday, the draw for today. She said they were drawing today, I believe. So, um, greatest ending. We gave him some time off, brought him back, two qualifiers. Uh, now a, a stiff training mile and back uh, into racing shape. I I know that they qualified him with hobbles on, I believe, unless I misunderstood what Stacy was saying. Uh, I believe they're going to race him free-legged his first start, and, and I'll be honest, I, I found him much, much better without the hobbles on. I know we had some partners saying, oh, you know, he's not as good, you haven't left with him, and the very next week, I just blasted him right out of there with no hobbles on. I think he was a winner in 52 and a piece. He is a nice horse, and unfortunately, I'll be the first to admit, he is not the horse we bought him to be, but there's nothing stopping him from being the horse we bought him to be, and I think that's the biggest takeaway of, uh, of everything surrounding uh, greatest ending. That's my two cents on greatest ending. JK Victory coming out of the field next, uh, two weeks from now, I believe he'll be back in. We'll get him going back at the Meadows. Uh, looks like money is in a good class on Monday. Unfortunately, it's the same class as Yo Mister, and that is part and parcel why that will be Yo Mister's last start in Canada. Uh, Neptune is training down now in Harry Polk's burn. That horse and Trosa were both a little bit sick when they arrived but they're both back in good health and feeling good now as uh, as we head into November. 
Rock Shining Star will be in Thursday at uh, Dayton Raceway. He missed last week, which isn't going to hurt him at all. He bled a little bit from the start before that. And uh, now goes into Dayton, sharp as attack. Jason will have him back and ready to go next Thursday. Three point blue chip. I went by uh, Kane Kaufman after the wire last night. I looked right at him and I said, make sure you don't pick over this horse next week. He is that kind of sharp right now. Very, very good. Very happy with what I saw from him. And he too is happy and sharp. Troisa, as I said, a little bit sick when we got him back to, or when we got him to uh, North America from uh, Australia. He's healthier now and uh, starting to train in Ontario. Yo, Mister, as I said, this will be his last start in Canada. He'll likely go to the Meadows or Southern Ohio or uh, Indiana. I'll make my mind up over the next 48 hours exactly where he is going to go. Chevron's bypass, uh, we just have to dry her up, keep her lungs dried up, keep her airway dried up. She bled her last start, and I think this was more of a compounding, uh, a compounding bleeding where a little bit spilled over like her first start she could beat the wire probably blood a little bit her next start where she finished at the back probably blood a little bit but it was later in the card we couldn't scope her same with the next start but because he raced her in such a different way from his first start we just blamed it on him which wasn't really fair to luke Eversall. because the reality of the situation is she was probably bleeding trained her on monday just again no vet on the track and she trained so good that it never dawned on me that she possibly could have bled. So when they said, oh, we're not here till later this afternoon, I said, ah, don't worry about it. I'm sure she's fine. And then we raced her last night. She was not fine. She raced poorly and then showed an awful lot of blood after the race for a horse in one race. I don't think that came from last night's race. I think that was started much before. Now that we know that, we can train her. We can, we can prepare her to race in a much, much different way. And I think that Chevron's bypass will be that much better her next start because of that. Uh, Delicious Stone DK will start jogging back this week. We'll know more this week. He had a real problem where he was making noise. There was a gigantic ulcer on his epiglottis. They removed the membrane. It just, we're trying our best to get this guy back moving forward. And it's been problematic the last three weeks. But we'll see how it plays out this week uh, in Ontario. And then Patrick Caprona, a great qualifier the other day at Northfield Park. He is going to be heading to... Dayton Raceway in the non-winners of oh, 6,000. We almost headed to Dayton Raceway there. We went over that bump so hard. Um, <laughs> train tracks. <laughs> Damn train tracks. Um, he's heading to Dayton Raceway on Thursday. I'm excited to watch Thursday's card. We have Rock Shining Star, Save America, and uh, Patrick DePrano. All 300. I don't know if they get in yet. If they did, it'll be a pretty exciting card. Only to be followed up by an exciting Friday from Dayton also with um, pickpocket, three point blue chip, and um, Drebin and Casanova Hall. It should be a great Friday, also from Dayton Raceway. So, we are here, we are mere minutes from the Agriculture Center uh, complex, the farm show complex in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We're gonna look at some horses, we're gonna do some videos for you tomorrow. We are here now at the last and one of the biggest sales of the year. It is Harrisburg, Pennsylvania 2024. We will talk to you very soon. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Take care.